Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to rewire a 7-pin trailer plug. Here is a brand new one as you can see and there the old one it is damaged. So I'm just going to show you how to take the old part off and rewire it. In order to do this job you'll need some general purpose tools, a star screwdriver, a flat screwdriver, uh, this is called a wire stripper and there are side cutters. If you do not have these exact tools it's not a problem. I generally do use a a portable screwdriver so you might see me using that in the video all right so the first thing you need to do is take the old one off now what you might find is that this is all uh, rusted it might even be corroded as you can see it's very very tight so you could just spray it with some oil right so now there's a little cap at the back I'm going to peel that back and I'm going to open that up like that and there you can see the old one You're right now yeah, I can see I've got some screws here that stop the wire from pulling out of the adapter and there you can see the old one uh, pretty dirty in here and look at all that corrosion there especially on that black terminal in the middle right now because this has been under a lot of pressure you can see how this is uh, deformed instead of uh, trying to reuse the old wires I'm actually just going to cut it over here now in your case you might not want to do that and you might just want to open each one of these screws one by one and uh, release the wires in order to put in the new one so whichever way you do this is up to you but I'm going to do it in the uh, more thorough way which means I'm going to cut this wire completely I'm just going to put this over here and if you're wondering what this paper is well wiring a trailer plug is actually uh, wired according to a standard and this happens to be the SABS 1327 1981 standard um, this standard is common worldwide for seven pin trailer plugs okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take about four to five centimeters and just pierce the jacket just a little bit without damaging the wires themselves so you can see I'm just piercing the jacket there we go opening that up now I'm going to take the uh, little rubber grommet here on the new one and I'm just going to thread this first onto the wire like that and I'm going to open this one up so long and as you can see there are two screws here so I don't have to thread this in first because I will be able to open uh, both of these some of these trailer plugs do not have two screws so you would have to thread this in first but in this case I will be able to uh, thread it in afterwards right so what I want to do now is I want to strip a little bit of the uh, insulating uh, covering here right so I'm going to use something called a wire stripper so what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip about 10 millimeters there we go on each wire and now what you need to do is you need to look at the standard and make sure you wire this correctly this is color code right so if you look over here you'll see there's a pin one and that pin correlates to this one over here so that means at the back of this pin I need to use the yellow wire how do I know that well I don't know if you can see there is a lip there and there it's the same lip it's showing you that that designates itself as a lip there it is because when you close the trailer plug you will see that there is a space and that space is at usually at the bottom and that's what that lip is so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to twist this yellow one and I'm actually going to bend it like that so it can fully compress when I tighten the screw Right, and if you look closely, you'll see you tighten on the wire, not the jacket. The jacket ends just before the screw, which must tighten onto the wire itself. Right, so the yellow is done. Now we go to the blue. Now these do have a description, like the yellow was the left indicator. Uh, the blue happens to be an auxiliary wire. 
Um, in other countries, I think it's a fog light. And then the three is the earth. So I'm just going to follow the same principle. I twist and then I turn. But now keeping in mind, this is opposite view. Right now it's the blue one. So what you could do is just loosen these screws so long so that they're all loosened. And you can twist each one of these wires now. Right, now blue, make sure you're tightening on the wire and not on the jacket. Now white. And this is what it should look like. As you can see, the uh, wires are right in there. Uh, screws are tightened on the wires. Right, do a last check. Make sure they're all tight. Right, so just quickly check. Uh, checking the pinouts. One yellow, two blue, three white, four green, five brown six red seven black and looking at that yes yes so that is correct now now it's time to put it into the uh, casing right i'm just going to loosen this fastening screw here and inserting this is quite easy because it can only go one way now what you're looking for is you see the one side has got a recess and the one side has not so i'm just going to twist this round and there you go you can see how that lip there seats perfectly into uh, the space there and now what i'm going to do is you can see i'm pressing that in a bit right now just before you tighten it just press it in a bit like that so it's got a bit of leeway there and then i'll only tighten it all right now don't tighten it so much that it actually pierces through this insulator here um, there you can see it is strong uh, that is tight enough and as you can see it's even bending now it's time to put the other side on have a look, you can see there. Right, just having a look at the car side. Now when I open the cap, you can see that um, it's all like dusty and uh, even a little bit of uh, corrosion in there. And I, I wouldn't want to put this brand new nice plug in there and, re and dirty it. So what you would do now is just clean this out of it. So what I've got here is some rubbing alcohol. Ooh. Uh, put it on a brush here and just clean this out rubbing alcohol and if you've got a blower then you could just blow it out and i do recommend if you've got something called contact chemi which just takes away any of the oxides um, and the corrosion on the pins so there we go i put the contact chemi and now I can uh, insert the new plug. Wow, fits in perfectly. And just put that in and out a few times. And just having a look at that, I can see that I got all the dust out. And if you forgot about the last rubber boot like I did, I'm just gonna cut it off. Sorry about that. And some people like to go the extra mile and put some sprag on the wire because sometimes the wire might uh, scratch on the ground. Well, that's up to you. You could just put sprag around here like this, but this is extra if you are interested. All right, so here is the sprag. You could put a cable tie or uh, insulation tape, totally up to you. It is not a requirement to have this. Uh, the reason why I've put this on is sometimes, you know, especially when you uh, loan your trailer out, people let the wire run on the floor and it scrapes. So I just uh, put the sprag there, but obviously it's not a requirement. Right, your final step is just to test it. There you can see I'm testing the indicator, test your brakes, reverse, 
and whatever else you've got connected if you've got fog lights or whatever all right so thanks for watching and cheers